Alright, welcome to the Young Turks uh, on a dramatic and disappointing day. So, it, that has been the theme of late, but we do have some updates on disappointing news. Uh, you guys uh, are well aware that we're in the struggle uh, for healthcare reform and specifically the public option. I'm going to give you very important updates on that. Uh, it has swung back and forth. There is some, you know, uh, debate as to which direction Obama is going to go in, which direction the House is going to go in, and which direction the Senate is going to go in. They might all go in different directions. Uh, very important updates on those. We'll get to those in a little bit. Uh, and uh, Barack Obama has given a uh, speech to the children. What about the children? Uh, and are they devastated? Have they been completely indoctrinated? Will they all later become green job czars? We'll find out. That's a little bit later in the program but you know what I'm going to start with. Now, this is quite unfortunate, but uh, Glenn Beck called in a little earlier to the program, and he said he had a message for you guys on Van Jones, mainly towards Barack Obama, but he wanted you guys to hear it as well. And this is what he said about Van Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. And they did. This time, we didn't get him. They got him. Van Jones was the green job czar for uh, Barack Obama, and uh, he was involved in a number of so-called controversies, because they were created uh, by Glenn Beck. Uh, we will give you the history of how they were created in just a second. Uh, first, they found out that uh, he had once referred to himself when he was younger as a communist. Uh, later, of course, uh, he said that he was not, and that... Uh, he had grown out of that, that that was some experimentation when he was younger, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, if you've ever called yourself anything, sad day for you, that's going to come back to haunt you later, okay? Uh, then number two, they found a tape of him calling Republicans assholes. Oh, my God. Now, when Dick Cheney told Pat Leahy, quote, fuck off, that did not cause anyone to call for his resignation. Uh, Pat Leahy is a sitting senator. It's not like he said the F word in relationship to... Democrats generally. No, he told a specific senator that. I don't remember Glenn Beck or anyone else uh, saying that they, you know George Bush should fire Dick Cheney for that, but of course they said uh, Van Jones should be fired over once using a curse word. By the way, while he was not in government, Cheney was the vice president at the time, uh, Van Jones had not joined the Obama administration at all when he said that. So if you've ever cursed any time in your life, apparently you're not allowed to be in government. That's a fascinating new rule. And then third of all, after uh, enough digging, they found out that he signed a petition which he thought was to ask more questions about 9-11, but apparently was to say uh, the questions are about whether the George Bush administration in some way implicitly allowed 9-11 to happen. Now, do I think he should have signed that? No, I don't. Okay? And now he says he doesn't believe it now and never believed it, and that apparently he signed it thinking, hey, more questions should be asked. You know what? Let's say Van Jones is dead wrong on that. Let's give him that. So that's why his job, completely unrelated to green jobs are, to asking questions about 9-11, he's got to go from government. Now look, if you dig enough on anyone, you will find some dirt, <laughs> okay? And if you repeat it over and over and over on Fox News and the conservative radio or wherever it might go, well, then it's going to sound like it was terrible, and that's what Van Jones' life is all about. When in, far, in fact, of course, Van Jones has you know, fought for creating more jobs in America through our capitalist system and by taking you know, the inner city uh, and providing them jobs through a new movement of turning the, our economy to a more environmental-friendly economy. And these are all things that Obama is, of course, wants to do, and the preeminent expert on that is Van Jones, but since he made some mistakes in his past, he has to go. Now, uh, would I have fired Van Jones myself? Um, now, you know how I roll. Of course I wouldn't have, right? But if I was the president and you care a hell of a lot about politics, and you say, hey, you know what, I can't, the 9-11 thing's really bad, I can't have it, right? Okay. I wouldn't jump down Obama's throat for firing Van Jones at some point. I think it's a bad idea. I wouldn't do it, but I'm not going to go ballistic over it. 
But here's what I am going to go ballistic over. Firing him now. Why? <laughs> because you just told Glenn Beck and Fox News and every conservative dingbat talk show host and blogger in the country, come after all of my appointments. Find whatever you can on them, however old, however irrelevant, however denounced later in life, okay? If they shoplifted when they were 17, if they did said the wrong word to somebody when they were 23, I don't give a damn. Go find all that you can and try to take down every single one of my appointments because I, Barack Obama, will buckle. Now that is a terrible message to send. After Beck pounces on him over and over and says, you have to fire him, you say, yes, sir. Van Jones has to go, sir. Man, have you encouraged them. You have motivated them. You have empowered them. And if you were going to fire Van Jones at any point, you could not have picked the worst time. And on top of that, just to add a little extra insult to injury, it was over Labor Day weekend. You know, there were guys trying to create jobs. That's one of his things. And they're like, hey, you got to go. Now, of course, they didn't technically fire him. Van Jones resigned. <laughs> he said that um, if I have offended anyone with statements I have made in the past, I apologize. Uh, on the petitions uh, on 9-11, he said, it certainly does not reflect my views now or ever, but I do not want to distract from the important work uh, that the Obama administration is doing, that's always the code words, so I'm going to leave now. Now, I remember someone predicting this. Who thought that maybe he was going to get sacked? Couldn't it have been Jank Uger? Okay, I gave him an over-under over of two weeks, and I believe I said that on September 1st, and he resigned, what, on September 6th, I believe? So maybe I was a little generous on the over-under, and you should have gone under. A gentleman in the studio, I believe, goaded me into a $10 bet on this uh, a couple of days ago. Who was that gentleman? JR, was that you? Would you say that Van Jones would not be fired or resign? What are you talking about? I'm sorry. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't paying any attention. What are we, we're talking about Van Jones? Well, yeah, Van Jones. You remember that at all? I don't know who that guy is. <laughs> He's not in the administration, is he? Well, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, you know what? We have, we have a little clip from this. Let, let's watch it a little bit. Uh, and then I'll come back and tell you how this whole thing uh, came about. Okay? I'm, I'm ready to go ahead and put it down. $10. He is not going to get fired or resign. I'm going to do it. You've been trying to egg me on for this bet. Fine. I'll do it. I'm down. Okay. Are you going to be a man and accept? God. I'm just curious. You, you know, be that's, a, that's a great question, JR, because and that's a great offer of a bet. Because I'll tell you why. Because it's a bet I don't want to win. It's like like... If I think the Steelers are definitely going to lose a game, I don't want to make the bet that they're going to lose the game because I want them to win, right? It, because if Obama fires Van Jones, it shows that they're, he's got not, no backbone at all, that they're just going to crumble at every turn, at every turn. The only question is how much pressure does Fox apply? Because if Fox talks 24-7 about something, will Obama back down every time? And Van Jones is a very good test case for that, right? So I don't want to win that bet. I hope he doesn't back down. I hope he doesn't fire him. But in the past, they have been... Look, in the, during the campaign... Look, let's be fair, okay. Obama, during the campaign, did a pretty decent job of resisting Fox pressure, right? Uh, Rahm Emanuel uh, loves buckling to Fox pressure. So it's, it's a mixed bag, and I'm not sure, you know how it gets resolved. So finally, do I take your bet? Since I had a big mouth, I got to back it up. Okay, 10 bucks. Um, what do we give it? Uh, do we put a time cap on it? Uh, two months, six months? Now, I said two weeks initially, but you see me trying to stretch it out. Now. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, kinda, I'm willing to go a little further just because if he doesn't do it soon, they won't do it at all, I think. Mm -hmm. Unless he does something else. That he's, okay, now if something else happens... No, 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 no. That's, okay. of course. So uh, well, let's just let's make it fair. Two months, okay? Uh, after two months of pressure, if he's not fired, uh, I give you ten bucks. If he's fired, you got to give me ten bucks, and then go ahead and be tremendously disappointed in the Obama administration. So, Jr., you got my ten bucks. 
I really, I really don't remember that conversation. <laughs> well, uh, that should have refreshed your memory. <laughs> so, you know. so I was going to get a sandwich. Um, but fine, you know, whatever, dude. Yeah, fine. Are okay. you happy now? You, you, why don't you predict some more horrible things happen? How about that, Jake? <laughs> you know, somebody wrote an email, and God bless them, I love them for this. They're like, dude, are you ever wrong? Okay, now that's a funny question. Okay, of course I'm wrong. I paid JR on a, a bet the other day on Chris Brown. I think, uh, was he going to go to jail or not? I thought he would. JR thought he wouldn't. Uh, you know, I, I thought John Kerry was going to win in 2004. So, of course I've been, of course I've been wrong. But look, it's my job to follow politics and to see where things are going and let you know. Okay, so I'm going to be right, I would guess, about 85% of the time. Okay, because... I, I'm knee deep in it. So when I tell you the public option ain't going to happen, I'm not being pessimistic. I'm not guessing. Okay, I'm telling you based on the things that are coming down the pike. So, JR, do I have another depressing prediction? Yes. The public option will not be in the final bill. Okay. Now, there might be some version of it, like a trigger. We'll talk about that a little later in the program. But no, it's abundantly clear that they're not going to do a real public option in the bill so now that we've gotten that out of the way what has glenn beck's reaction been to van jones being fired because everyone agrees that glenn beck was the main guy who went after him he got a scalp and now what's he going to do with it all right well beck has a statement his statement reads the american people stood up and demanded answers instead of providing them the administration had jones resign under the cover of darkness so let's pause for a second the guy resigns Still not good enough for Glenn Beck. He did it under the cover of darkness. When would you like to have him do it? Was it? Did it have to be at high noon? <laughs> did he have to do a press conference where he's like, Hey, everybody! No, seriously, everybody! I want to apologize to Glenn Beck! And, uh, and resign. I don't know when there's a good time to resign. So it, no matter what you do, it is never good enough for the conservative pundits and talk show hosts and politicians. You can never appease them. You can buckle from here to oh, all the way to the end of your term, Obama, and you will never, ever appease them. So let's continue with Beck's statement. He says, I continue to be amazed by the power of everyday Americans to initiate charge in our government through honest questioning. And judging by the other radicals in the administration, I expect that questioning to continue for the foreseeable future. You understand? There are other radicals in the administration, and we we're going to continue to question them into the foreseeable future. In other words, thank you so much, President Obama, for giving us license and, at the same time, legitimizing what we did. By having him resign, you just sent a note to the whole country saying Glenn Beck was right, his crazy you know, conspiracy theories, this, that, and other thing. And if you, Glenn Beck draws somebody's name on a chalkboard and circles it enough, even if he misspells it, okay, we're going to buckle to his pressure. So they're going to come at you for four years now. In fact, then Glenn Beck uh, tweets this out. Through Twitter, he says, watchdogs. I assume that's his listeners who uh, go and try to dig things up. Find, these are all in capital letters. Find everything you can on Cass Sunstein, Mark Lloyd, and Carol Browner. Do not link before burning to disk. So, those are the next three people on his hit list. What are you going to do next time, President Obama? When they find something stupid or silly, or maybe even write about something that someone said 10 years ago, 20, 30 years ago, you're going to buckle again? Okay. So, for example, they're already on Cass Sunstein. Let me tell you who those people are. Cass Sunstein is uh, the nominee to be the head of the Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs. Very important position. Never even heard of it before. Now, Cass Sunstein is uh, one of the preeminent scholars in the country. Seems like a good fit for there, but of course, we're going to show you why in a second. The conservatives don't think so. Uh, and then uh, Mark Lloyd is the Associate General Counsel and Chief Diversity Officer of the FCC. And Carol Browner is the Assistant to the President for Energy and Climate Change another energy person that they're going for because a lot of these guys as I'm going to about to explain to you in a second are funded by right-wing groups um, I'm sorry the right-wing groups are funded by the oil companies now why do you think they went after Van Jones in the middle of the health care debate when he's doing green jobs it's because the oil companies are giving a lot of the money for these groups 
and their primary concern is that no cap and trade passes. I'll come back to that in one second. First, a fun little note on Cass Sunstein. So they're going to go after him. Uh, he once wrote a uh, scholarly paper on uh, organ donations, and he made the most obvious comment of all time. He said, we don't have a lot of organ donations because a lot of people have not volunteered and signed out uh, the, the cards, the donation cards, meaning that if they were in a horrible accident, they died for some reason, uh, are they giving permission uh, to, to you for the uh, uh, you to, for us to take their organs and give them to people who need it? You know, I filled one out. I don't know if you have, but a lot of people obviously haven't. So that's why the number is limited. The most benign point you've ever heard, right? So what is the headline on CNS News, which is apparently a conservative website? And this will be the first line of attack against their their next uh, person on their hit list. The headline is, Obama Regulation Czar Advocated Removing People's Organs Without Explicit Consent. <laughs> you see where this is going? <laughs> he said, we can't, we don't have more organs because obviously we can't remove people's organs without their explicit consent. They turned it around saying, aha, see, he wants to remove organs, people's organs without their explicit consent, really. Cass Sunstein wants to come in and be like, oh, you, give me a kidney. You, liver. <laughs> okay. You think this won't work? The death panels worked. They got over 50% of the country to believe that nonsense, that the government was going to interfere in end-of-life decisions that you and your family were going to make. That's in a Gallup poll. They got people to believe that because there was no defense. Okay. High, what a very high percentage of Republicans don't believe Obama is even a United States citizen. The birthers won on that within the Republican Party. It was a frightening amount for overall population. And I can go on and on. And they come up with this nonsense, the latest one being the speech that he gave to children, how he's indoctrinating them into his you know, socialist agenda, and people keep believing it. You think they won't believe Cass Sunstein's? The, the charges against Cass Sunstein? They're not, well, here's what's going to happen. The Democrats are not going to defend him. And when they don't defend them, people are going to think, well, it must be true. I guess the regulation czar wants to remove our kidneys and leave us in a Las Vegas hotel with ice and a couple of stitches in our back. Okay? I mean, they've literally gone to the most, the biggest urban myths in America, and they're willing to use those. All right, so, cast on scenes next, and then, as we can see here, Mark Lloyd and Carol Brown, and I wish them luck, and I'm sure that the president will have their back. <laughs> right. Uh, so, now, Oberman's trying to make up for this a little bit, and he uh, wrote on Daily Coast, um, find everything you can about Glenn Beck, Stu Berger, if that's how it's pronounced, and Roger Ailes. Tuesday will expand us uh, to the television audience and have a dedicated email address to accept leads, tips, contacts on Beck, his radio producer, that's Berger, and the chief of his TV enablers, Ailes. Now, look, I, I agree with Oberman. He's, I think partly, you know, striking back uh, in a kind of a humorous way and partly serious, and I'm with him. Yeah, okay, look, you're going to go after those guys. We'll come after you. Not in any physical way. Don't cry again about, oh, my family's in danger. He did it again back the other day. Oh, I'm so scared. My family's... Who's, who on the left is threatening your family? Please, you goddamn liar. Ain't nobody threatening your family. If you're scared because a couple of people don't like you, well, then, as usual, you're a coward, Okay what we see always with conservatives. But there's nobody threatening Glenn Beck. But look, you tell me that Van Jones got fired over this nonsense, and you can't, I can show you a million things that Glenn Beck should be fired over. But will he be? Of course not, because this is what Roger Ailes does at Fox News. This is, they'll be doing this kind of character assassination on uh, Obama administration, official after official. Now, look, I, I'm going to take a quick break here. When we come back, I'm going to show you how they did the hit job on Van Jones. We're going to break it down. Things you probably don't know as to who started it and how did it grow and at what point did uh, the Obama administration buck. Young Turks. Do you want another czar? No. I don't think so. By the way, we got one. We got rid of one. And my job starting tomorrow night is to get rid of every other one. I promise you that. You know, Jr. I don't even know who that is. Who is that? It was Sean Hannity. He was speaking at this ah. rally in uh, West Virginia. Okay, yeah. That's fun for everybody. That's exactly right. Okay. They're coming for all of them. Look, I'm going to repeat this one more time before we go to how this uh, came about. 
it's not that Van Jones resigned, okay? If you think, hey, he should have never signed that 9-11 nonsense, you know, he sh uh, if somebody emailed us saying, hey, look, he's got to be a, a big boy uh, in big boy politics, and he's got to know not to curse uh, Republicans even before he comes into the administration. For whatever reason, if you don't believe in Van Jones, that's not my point. My point is, you don't do it now because you feed the beast, and you encourage them, and you legitimize them. And that's why it's such a bad idea. Now, let's go to the people that Obama has, uh, unfortunately, uh, encouraged and legitimized by firing Van Jones when he did. Um, it, here's a guy by the name of Phil Carpet. He is with Americans for Prosperity. This is a front group for a lot of corporations that give money to this right-wing think tank, right? And then they go out and do their bidding. They do research. Uh, they go after people, they bust people in sometimes, whether it's on the health care issue. There are a couple of different groups like this, like Freedom Works, and Americans for Prosperity is fun, uh, mainly funded by oil money. Okay, So while everybody else is focused on health care, their job was, at all costs, make sure we go to get people that are working on energy Okay, and undermine Obama's energy program. And one of those guys is the green job czar, Van Jones. So they put him on their hit list, and uh, Kirpin wrote this uh, giddy article on foxnews.com where he explained how they did it. Because he couldn't help himself. He was so beside himself with happiness and glee, and I don't blame him, right? And he wanted to take credit for it, rightfully take credit for it. So he, so he said, look, this is one of, quote, one of the most significant things I've ever had the honor of being involved in, in getting Van Jones fired. Okay, so then he tells us how it started. It started on July 9th, and he was, uh, went on Fox and Friends, and they asked him to come on uh, and explain what green jobs are. Okay, so now understand how Fox is complicit. They're in on this whole thing, right? So they asked Americans for Prosperity, which they know is a front group for the oil industry, to explain what green jobs are. Okay, the people who are most opposed to green jobs, they bring on as their expert, right? So he goes and does some research, and he wants to target Van Jones, and he finds uh, the buried in a very long article in a local paper that Van Jones once. Now at that point he's referring to himself as old. Back in the day when I was young, I once referred to myself as a communist. They're like, bingo, okay. So he brings that up, and then he emails it to Glenn Beck's program because he knows that's the one. A uh, guy who would love this kind of conspiracy theory. So he emails it to him, and Glenn Beck says, Fantastic, I'm going to work with you from now on. He brings him on his show uh, going forward, and then Beck proceeds to mention Van Jones almost every day from then on. Okay, so he's found a part of the media that he can work with. In fact, that media is inviting him on, and they know exactly who he's related to. Then another right wing blog called Gateway Pundit finds the 9 11 uh, petition that. Van Jones sign, and they forward that, uh, well, they write about it, and then everybody gets a hold of it, and then Fox News brings that up again, Glenn Beck brings that up again, somebody else finds a tape of him calling the Republicans a-holes, everybody plays that all over again, and then there are a couple of other groups involved. Uh, one is called um, Grass Fire, and uh, they are involved uh, here with Mike Pence. Okay, now why is that so important? They're another astroturfing outfit, and they set up, for example, a website called ResistNet, uh, where they had the site sending out people to all the town halls. Right? Another group being funded by the corporations, pretending to be grassroots. They even call themselves Grass Fire. Right? And who's Mike Pence? Mike Pence is a Republican congressman from Indiana, one of the top leadership in the House for the Republicans. So uh, on um, a couple of days uh, before uh, Van Jones resigned, uh, on September 4th, actually, Mike Pence came out and said Van Jones must resign because of his, quote, extremist views. Now, he's already working with this grass fire group, okay? So now they bring in their congressmen. They got the media, they got the fake grassroots groups being funded by the corporations, and then they bring in the congressmen. And, and then after Mike Pence said that, uh, then we had a couple of other co uh, Republican senators come out and say, oh, no, 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 that's it. This is uh, absolutely unacceptable. John Cornyn, et cetera saying Van Jones absolutely must resign. And by the time he got to the, up to the congressman and the senators, you could feel Rahm Emanuel and the Obama administration in knees wavering, wavering, wavering. And it didn't take very long. Mike Pence says it on September 4th, and Van Jones is fired almost immediately thereafter. Okay, 
So now uh, here's a couple other groups. And Addie Stan over at Alternet did some great research on this. Americans for Prosperity, as we explained, Grass Fire. Then there's Freedom Works, which is the astroturf group led by uh, House Majority Leader Dick Army. And then, of course, there's the Murdoch Empire of News Corp, including Fox News Channel, New York Post, et cetera, et cetera. And this is how they work in conjunction. Some of their jobs is to get the research. Others is to get it out to everybody, including the media groups. And then they bring in their paid congressmen and to do their bidding. And they say, oh, you got to resign. If he doesn't resign, then we don't have bipartisanship. And, of course, the minute they threaten to pull bipartisanship, which they have never displayed, They've never voted with Obama, so I don't know what bipartisanship they're pulling, but for some reason, Obama it can't help himself but cave into that kind of pressure, and that's how they get rid of people. Okay. But why? Why do they get rid of them? It all comes back to where the money came from. It's, in every one of these political issues, you can do the same thing they did in Watergate. Follow the money. And the money's coming from corporate America, because under no circumstances do they want green jobs, c climate change legislation, cap and trade. In fact, let's go to, back to um, Phil Kirpin here and see how he finishes up his article on foxnews.com. He says, now that Jones has resigned, we need to follow through with two critical policy victories. First, stop cap and trade, uh, which could send uh, these green groups trillions, and second, repeal the unspent portion of the stimulus bill, which stands to give them billions. The Van Jones affair, as President Obama likes to say, is a teachable moment. And we need to put uh, not just him, but the whole corrupt green jobs concept outside the bounds of the political mainstream. So their whole, I mean, he's telling you, okay, we're going to try to make these guys seem like radicals. He, he's the guy funded by uh, the oil companies. And, uh, and he wants to create this as a teachable moment, where they now have learned how to do character assassination and tr uh, of Obama administration officials and undermine the actual policy. Because th that's where their billions of dollars are at stake. Now, now, we know this now, right? You know this. I hope to God the Obama administration knows this. How many times are they going to let him do it? I'm going to go back and make this point one final time. If you look at somebody's history, I don't care who it is, and you look enough and dig enough, can you find two to three objectionable things about them? Well, you bring it to a reasonable audience, an audience that doesn't know, doesn't know the context, doesn't know where it came from, and you say to them, hey, what do you think about this? And somebody will say, ah, oh, wow, that doesn't sound quite right. You can find that on anybody living in the United States of America, anybody in the government. You could certainly find that about Democrats. You could find out that a hundred times more on any Republican. But there are no, there's nobody spending millions of dollars to try to find dirt on Democrats. I'm sorry, on Republicans. But there are people who make a living finding dirt on Democrats so that they don't get that legislation passed because that'll save them billions of dollars. So if you didn't like what happened to Van Jones, well, buckle up, because they're right. It'll happen again. And as my friend Joaquin Phoenix once said, and again, and again, and again. So congratulations, uh, Barack Obama Con uh, and Rahm Emanuel, who I <laughs> am positive is behind this. Uh, you have greatly encouraged your enemies and greatly discouraged your allies. Brilliant politics. OK, now. Uh, meanwhile, Barack Obama goes and, uh, <laughs> you know what, before we do the Barack Obama AFL-CIO speech, hey, since you got that uh, picture I talked about uh, from the old days? Yeah, okay, so, so and one of our listeners sent this in. Let me see who it is. It's uh, Glenn Martin, and he found an old picture from back in the day about um, how uh, everything is communist, right? You know how now Glenn Beck uses that? He just screams, Van Jones, communist, Obama, communist, right? Well, this is an old tactic. It was used in the you know, 1940s, 50s, 60s. Uh, anybody who was against their, uh, whatever the policy of that day happened to be, whether it was cap and trade or health care reform or civil rights or whatever it is, they just call them communists. And this old picture is a perfect way to demonstrate that. Let's look at this. People holding signs and the American flag saying, race mixing is communism. Okay, these are the same guys, man. They haven't changed at all. In fact, 
they've grown so old, it might literally be the same guys. And they're still watching Fox News Channel. Well, now they're watching Fox News Channel. Uh, and still doing the same old trick, calling people communists. And back then, they desperately didn't want you to mix races. Because you know what that could produce? It could produce a biracial child who might one day become president of the United States. <laughs> so don't believe the hype, man. I mean, God, I hope none of you are silly enough to think, oh, wait, wait a minute. No, that's, wait a minute, wait a minute. That might be real communism. <laughs> no, it's a typical smear they've used for decades now. All right, now uh, to Obama's AFL-CIO speech. It's a Labor Day picnic, and this speech has been described as fiery, and Obama went out to go get him. Uh, beautiful little speech here. He says, um, paid leave, minimum wage, Social Security, quote, all bear the union label. All right, woohoo, union. He's right about that, uh, but he goes on to say, it was labor that helped build the largest middle class in history, so even if you're not a un union member, Every American owes something to America's labor movement. Okay, again, very true, nicely done. He continues, we remember that the rights and benefits we enjoy today were not simply handed out to America's working men and women. They had to be won. They had to be fought for by men and women of courage and conviction. From the factory floors of the Industrial Revolution to the shopping aisles of today's superstores, uh, they stood up and spoke out to demand a fair shake uh, and an honest day's pay for an honest day's work. Many risked their lives, some gave their lives, some made it a cause of their lives, like Senator Ted Kennedy, who we remember today. Uh, and then, of course, gives the usual platitude that Obama does, where he says, your voice can change the world, your voice can get health care passed, your voice will make sure the American worker is protected, you can build America, I need your help. And by the way, if you actually do speak up, I'm going to make sure to ignore you. Okay, now, why do I say that? Because these are beautiful words. Uh, I'm inspired. Ooh. Uh, so the two things that the unions say they care most about is car check, where they can sign up more union members. It's a very important piece of legislation to them. It's not as important to me, but that's their bread and butter, right? Uh, so far, Obama signaled that he probably will not insist on that. And a couple of Democrats in the Senate have already said, nah, it's not really possible. To the point that the leader, the, the person who is now the secretary and who might be the next president of the AFL-CIO, has basically kind of given up on it. He said, yeah, maybe that's not that essential. That was your number one issue, man. How is that not essential? Okay, so your number one issue, I'm not going to give you that. How about your number two issue? And God bless the unions for this, uh, was the public plan, the public option in health care reform. Because they really want their people to be able to have good health care, okay? And they're very, very insistent on it. In fact, they put that sometimes above their own car check issue, the unions do. Is Obama going to give them that? Nope. It's not like they didn't speak out. There's a lot of people with placards and people have called and, uh, and obviously sent messages to uh, President Obama in 18 different ways. That was their two priorities. And Obama delivers them the elbow from the sky, won't give them those two priorities, and then gives them a beautiful speech about how, oh, we couldn't do it without you guys, and please work towards health care reform and other labor reforms who've done such a good job. And when you to raise your voice, I will make sure that it doesn't get past Rahm Emanuel. So, very nice speech, Barack. Very nice speech. Nicely done. I'm so moved. <laughs> All right. You ready for the public option? Speaking of which, now, over the weekend, uh, people said there were mixed signals. There were no mixed signals. It was a very clear signal. Robert Gibbs, the spokesperson for the White House, went uh, to the Sunday shows. David Axelrod did. Uh, you know, I, I can play you the clips, and maybe we'll play them for you later. But um, here is the critical uh, point that Axelrod made. He said, the president believes the public option is a good tool. Oh, it's a good tool. Well, that must be that they're in favor of it, right? No, that means we're going to kill it. Here's the next sentence. It shouldn't define the whole health care debate, however. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna, this is very important. Let me break it down for you, okay? If they say the public option is important, it means it is not important. If they say that they want it, it means they do not want it. Now, why? Why, <laughs> why do I assume things that seem to be the exact opposite? No, because... In politics, essential, I, I, it has to be in the bill, critical, those are code words for, no, if it's not in the bill, I'm going to veto it. 
Okay. Now they don't have to say, I'm going to veto it. And every time you ask Gibbs, Gibbs says, oh, that's much later in the process. We're not going to prejudge the process, right? Uh, but they can clearly signal by saying essential, critical, the main component, central component. If they say that they like something or that they find it important or a good tool, that means later they're going to say, oh, we fought so hard for it, but it just didn't turn out that way and it, we couldn't get it to work. So although it was important, we jettisoned it. It is absolutely clear as day. Who'd like to make a bet? Anybody want to take a bet on it? <laughs> All right. Now, uh, could it be that co-ops eventually get through? It's possible. Could it be that a trigger gets through? Yes, it's possible. Now, those are weak sauce, and I'll explain that in a, in a little bit. But what is not possible is a real robust, as they say, public option or a strong public option where they put it through because no way Axelrod goes on those sh shows and says that the public option shouldn't define the whole healthcare debate if they think it's essential. He's saying, he's obviously signaling, we're going to get rid of it and say it was not essential. Uh, Gibbs also added, I doubt we're going to get into any heavy veto threats, meaning we're never going to draw a line in the sand. By the way, as they're doing this, um, Tim Pawlenty, a guy who's likely to run for president on the Republican side in 2012, he's the governor of Minnesota, came out and said, oh, the trigger, which is now the compromise of the compromise, the original compromise was the public option, now the trigger is supposed to be the compromise of the compromise, that it, a public option could be triggered if the, if the private insurance still sucks five or ten years later, right? And what did Paul Lenti say? Unacceptable. The Democrats better not do it. They better back down from that too because it is never enough for the Republicans. Now, I'm going to tell you about how these things are leading to more and more Democrats that were on the fence going over to the Republican side or going against the public option. I will give you exactly how that works and, and what's in the news today on that, and we'll break it down a little further for you and get you a little bit more demoralized. <laughs> but when we return, we're going to talk to um, Mike Elk, who was a campaign staffer for Barack Obama. We want to see if campaign staffers, and we're going to do this throughout the week, uh, still have that hopeful feeling and if they still believe in the change that Barack Obama promised them. Young Turks. All right, back on the Young Turks. Uh, if all this stuff wasn't discouraging enough, the Supreme Court has made a decision that is going to involve more corporate money uh, in politics. I'm going to have to tell you about that decision tomorrow. Uh, that is going to lead to a uh, worse and worse situation of our politicians completely being bought and sold by the corporations in America. Uh, we'll give you that update tomorrow. Of course, uh, Barack Obama giving his speech on health care reform tomorrow. We'll cover it play-by-play -play live on theyoungturks.com, as we always do. And uh, I'll tell you if something surprising happens, and I'll interpret what he said uh, to uh, read between the lines. And now uh, some encouraging news on the public option. Uh, a couple of uh, Democrats in the House uh, are fighting strong. Um, Representative Raul Girihalva uh, is all, one of the top de progressives in the Progressive Caucus. He's, in fact, the co-chair of it. And uh, he keeps saying, look, I, th I think you guys have misunderstood what, where we stand. Hell no. No health care reform without a public option. If there's no public option, we vote no. Uh, if he sticks to those guns, that would be amazing. Uh, but he has been very adamant on that, and he has called it, if they do a health care reform without a public option, he said it would be, quote, a surrender. Now, them's fighting words, and I like that. And then uh, Congressman Anthony Weiner has been one of the few real brave guys out there fighting for real health care reform. He uh, just wrote an uh, editorial saying, hey, you know what? Next time we'll come at him with single payer. Shot across the bow for uh, uh, Barack Obama. Hey, if you don't like the public option, how about single payer? He said it's a perfectly good system. It works for Medicare. It works for everybody under the age of, I mean, over the age of 65 in the country. And uh, that is uh, still an option for us if you don't like the public option. So I love Wiener saying that. Now, finally, Barack Obama gave that speech to the kids today uh, that was so controversial about indoctrinating kids. It was so terrifically dull that we chose not to share it with you. Uh, he basically said, rah, 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 stay in school, you'll be awesome, you can make big change. 
Uh, and now, of course, that uh, it was as uncontroversial as we thought it would be, of course, the Republicans are backpedaling. Uh, Florida GOP chair, who had originally called it socialist indoctrination, said, quote, it's a good speech, I'll let my kids watch. Uh, that was uh, Jim Greer. And then Newt Gingrich came out and said, uh, no, it's a fine speech, quote, I recommend it to everybody. What happened? I thought it was going to be socialist indoctrination. Well, what happened was the media, in a rare case, actually stood up and said these charges of socialism and indoctrination in this speech were flat out stupid. John Harwood said that. Uh, and he is, you know, uh, a guy who does a lot of the conventional wisdom in the mainstream media from the Wall Street Journal and NBC. Tom Friedman from the New York Times called it flat out stupid. So then the Republicans backpedaled on it, and uh, and he gave the speech, and it went off without a hitch, and was completely dull, as I said. So yet another stupid conspiracy theory by the Republicans with no backing whatsoever. All right, Young Turks. <laughs>